general reference dictionary a general reference dictionary as the title indicates covers the total linguistic stock or lexical stock of a language the dictionary of any size may be a general reference dictionary it contains words from all spheres of human activities and all areas of the life of the speakers of the language the general dictionaries are two types one is academic or normative dictionary the other is referential or descriptive dictionary an academic dictionary gives the lexical stock of the standard language the aim of this dictionary is to present the language as it is expected to be and stop it from decay it has an eye on the future usage of the language the selection of entries is done from the works of the creative writers maybe both earlier and contemporary the literature of science arts etc newspapers magazines and other materials which are considered representative of the standard language can also be considered for collecting lexical stock for this dictionary an academic dictionary do not contain words of local or regional variations such words are included in the dictionaries only when they have been used by some writers and have been standardized in the language similarly archaic and obsolete words used by creative writers are also included in them the whole database in the dictionary represents a self contained and homogeneous structure the chief feature of such dictionaries is their inclusion of profuse illustrative examples from the corpus with or without citations different types of dictionaries including dictionaries of technical terms grammatical dictionaries dictionaries of spelling dictionary etc can come in this group a referential or descriptive dictionary on the other hand does not have any normative aim the word stock of this dictionary is selected from different heterogeneous speech and text corpora the corpora include not only literary texts but also oral translations of texts it contains words of regi different regions social groups as well as stylistic variations according to scholars a reference dictionary is the one behind which does not lie any unified language consciousness the collected words may belong to heterogeneous speech corp groups of different periods which do not in the list form any good system from the point of view from this point of view the coverage of words in a descriptive dictionary can be both monolingual or bilingual or multilingual but any type of dictionary described earlier can either be monolingual or bilingual the lexicographic information which is normally given in a descriptive reference dictionary an entry in a general reference dictionary usually contains the following information head words no sub entry no nesting no run on entries pronunciation of head words pitch output may be in ipa or audio output spelling variations of the head words etymological information native source foreign source morphological information grammatical information part of speech information definitional meaning list of synonyms 
cognate word sets from other languages, list of antonyms, list of hypernyms and hyponyms, polysemy and homonymy, lexical generativity, nature of collocation, idiomatic usage, use in phrasal units, proverbial usage, illustrative examples, illustrative pictures, uses varieties, citations from informative and imaginative texts. It is not necessary that every entry in every dictionary has to have all these information. Some may not give synonyms and antonyms, why? Others may not add illustrative examples. The pronunciation may not be necessary for a monolingual dictionary for native speakers, but necessary for the foreign learners. The NT words can be divided into two broad parts. The first part is called the lemma, which includes the headword, spelling, pronunciation, and grammatical information. Grammatical information can be taken as a part of the meaning. The second part gives the descriptions of the lexical item in terms of its meaning and usage. The first part may also be called the left hand side and described part and the second part is the right hand side and description part, head words. The head words, the head word is also called the citation form or entry word. What is a head word and how it is fixed? For a dictionary. Some of the basic characteristics of a lexicographic word, which are <coughs> co-terminus with headwords, have been discussed earlier. The form and meaning are the main criteria for the selection of a headword. For this, a lexicographer takes resource, recourse to the word and the paradigm method. A paradigm is the sum total or system of the grammatical forms characterized, of a, characterized by a word. In other words, the inflected forms of a word which has a constant lexical meaning can be considered as a head word. Some of the basic criteria for abstractions of the canonical form are Generally, not exhaustively, it has the capacity of occurring in isolation. It is the most frequent of all the forms. It can stand for the whole paradigm. But the most notable criteria of abstraction of a canonical form is governed by the grammatical tradition of a language. Every language has a tradition of its canonical forms. For verbs, the root is the entry form. Languages like Hindi, Bangla, Punjabi, Gujarati enter the infinite form of the verb in the dictionary. Kannada, Tamil, Malayalam and other South Indian languages give the root form which is also an imperative second person singular form. Some languages give the nominative singular as the entry form of nouns like Hindi and Russian, while others use the stem form as the head word for nouns as in cases of Sanskrit. The situation is quite comfortable for the lexicographer of languages which have some grammatical or lexicographical traditions of canonical forms. For languages which do not have any grammatical and lexicographical traditions, the lexicographer has to fix the canonical forms. In order to find out the canonical form, he has to be a complete, do a complete grammatical analysis of the language. The canonical form need not be overtly found in all the forms of a paradigm. It is a reference point and is perceptible, perceivable in most if not all forms of the paradigm. Although 
the lexicographer selects the canonical form as the head word for the dictionary. All the forms in a paradigm are to be examined very carefully. If there is any form in the paradigm which is irregular and cannot be covered by the general inflectional rules of the languages, it is to be given special treatment. For example, English goose noun and plural geese and English sale or sold, write and written, all those forms are irregular forms. Irregular forms should be included in a way so as to bring forth their relation to the canonical form, abstracted and irregularities explained as far as possible. Generally, such forms are treated in the following way in the dictionary. The canonical form is given as head word. The irregular form is given along with it in the entry. When the irregular form occurs at its at a first in the uh, uh, alphabetical order, a cross reference is made to the head word. But in digital form, every word is a head word, so each word can be discussed separately. Spelling and pronunciation. The head word is followed by pronunciation, but it is an optional feature. It depends on the type of the dictionary. In an English dictionary for a native speaker, this may not be necessary since readers can have their own inferences. But if the dictionary is meant for non-native speakers, pronunciation should be given. On the other hand, for languages in which there is no difference between graphemes and phonemes, there is no need to give pronunciation. But for those languages whose writing system does not have a one-to-one -one correlation between graphemes and phonemes, it is essential to give pronunciation in the dictionary. Should pronunciation be given in a phonemic or phonetic script? In the guide of pronunciation, in the font matter of the dictionary, an inventory of the phonemes with all their allophones should be given. But should each individual entity give pronunciation in a detailed phonetic transcription or in the phonetic script? Will the allophonic details are given in the front matter be adequate? Or since the pronunciation is so important that the reader is to be provided with actual phonetic transcription with all the entries to help him find ready information with each entry. The best solution is to take an approach which is something like midway may be considered for this. Scholars have suggested that a good general principle to follow might be this. Make the transcription phonemic for all the entries except those when the user of the book may be expected to go seriously wrong unless he is given phonetic rather than merely phonemic guidance. And naturally, the two systems should be sharply distinguished in usual way. The phonetic transcription being set off by square brackets, the phonemic transcriptions with diagonal lines. Definitions and descriptions. The definition and descriptions are the basic ones for defining words. We give a description of a lexical unit for giving the meaning of a lexical unit. This description generally, but not always, pertain to the extralinguistic and encyclopedic components of the lexical unit. For example, in Bangla, Chakur, a type of patrese which is considered a lover of the moon and which eats fire. Also different semantic features of a lexical unit put together are defined by paraphrase or rewording. As for example, an interpretation of the verbal signs 
by means of other signs of the same language. For example, English car is, is defined as a noun quality that enables a person to control fear in the face of danger, pain, misfortune, etc. Linguistic definitions alone does not suffice to describe all the words of a language. The meaning of many a lexical unit is the result of a process of evolutions involving historical, social, cultural, mythological and folklore traditions of the speakers of a language. So while defining a lexical unit, the lexicographer has to keep all these facts in his mind. We may illustrate this by some examples. When a lexicographer defines the word niyog in Sanskrit dictionary, he has not only to give the general meaning of appointment, responsibility, etc., but also the meaning and ancient Aryan practice according to which a childless widow or woman was permitted to have sexual intercourse with a person other than the husband to beget a child. In Bangla, the word Borgi means old Maharashtrian army. But this meaning may not be adequate for giving the complete picture of the word. It has to include some information about the ruthless ransacking and plundering of the cities and villages by those members of this army. The lexicographic definition need not be the same as a logical definition. The logical definition identifies the defined object or idea by giving it in total contrast with all other things. It puts an object in a class. The lexicographic definition puts only those features which are sufficient to determine, differentiate the object from other units. Thus, the lexicographic definition gives general features to specify the object. It may not be the same as required by the logical definition. A definition like the following, the Bangla word Sundar, that which appears to be good and soothing is looking look at looking at in lexicographic lexicographically adequate, but is not much complete logically. A thing may not be pleasant to look at, but it may be similar. For instance, we may examine the following definition of kokil, kakku, in a Bangla dictionary and see the meaning of sundar, a black colored bird which sings beautifully, that is melodiously. Here, the appeal is not to the eyes but to the ear and sundar is not pleasing to the eyes but to the ears. The definition should be precise, accurate and unambiguous as possible. It should avoid unnecessary words. Only minimum words with utmost clarity should be used for defining a word. The definition should be so precisely and accurately worded that it denotes one and only one sense and it leaves no scope for misinterpretation. It should clarify all the semantic features of the word. The definition should be inclusive in the sense that all the words in the definition must also be defined in the dictionary. No word in the definition should be left undefined. One of the ways to define a lexical unit is to define the unfamiliar words of a language by familiar and basic words. Every language has a stock of words which are basic and minimal for it. This forms <clears throat> the nucleus of the total lexicon and constitutes the built-in vocabulary of the language. As proposed to this, there are peripheral and larded words also. 
Such words must be called built out vocabulary of the language. The built out vocabulary is defined in terms of the built in vocabulary. In other words, the unknown is defined by the known. But if the common words are defined by unknown words, it will create difficulties for readers. The process of defining a language or meta language should be very simple. Difficult and uncommon words should be avoided as far as possible. Care should be taken to limit the use number of uncommon words defining the word. In the internalized reader's dictionary of English words, word list of 24,000 words is defined within a single vocabulary of 1,490 words selected from my code. Definitions should avoid circularity. That is, the word should not be repeated in both the defined and defining words. For example, English continuity meaning quality or state of being continuous and continuous having continuity of parts is an example of circularity. That kind of circularity should be avoided for giving better understanding of the concepts by the readers. The definition should not be under specific. It should be adequate to give the complete and total picture of the defined word. Etymological information. Etymology can help in clarifying the meaning of a particular word. Average 5% uh, of the total lexical English whose meanings otherwise appear to be obscure. Etymological information. Etymology can help in clarifying the meaning of at an average of 5% of the lexical units whose meanings otherwise appear to be obscure to the users. For example, the Bangla word benchy is derived from English word bench. Etymological information elucidates the meaning of the word. There is another word called firingi in Bangla, which means foreigner. The meaning of the following word becomes clearer when this particular etymological meaning is kept in view. Bangla firingi rog or syphilis or any other venereal disease. The etymology of the word indicates that the disease was introduced in the language community by foreigners and throws additional light on the meaning. As a matter of fact, Etymology explains all the meaning, but in some cases, it gives clue for to understanding obscure meanings. Many dictionaries give information about etymology in the lemma form. Some dictionaries give etymologies at the end of the entry. Dictionary of Indian languages, particularly Hindi, Bangla, Marathi and others, provides this information with the help of the origin tags indicating the source language and the source form, form of the lexical unit. For example, in Hindi, chota is actually derived from Sanskrit khudra, small. It is given immediately after the word. The lemma also contains variants of the head word. When the variants occur at their alphabetical place, a cross reference is usually made to the main entry. Consider English crossier and crossier. It points to another aspect of the lexicographic practice. If it is decided to include regional or dialectal forms, these should be given in the lemma. These dialectal forms, again, when they occur at their alphabetical order, may be cross referenced to the main entry. Grammatical information. Grammatical information can be treated both as a part of the lemma as well as outside the lemma since it helps in the identification of the form of the lexical unit it forms the part of the lemma but as we shall see later it also helps in finding out the meaning. It can be therefore treated as the second part of the entry. The question of giving grammatical information in a dictionary has to be examined from two points, points of view. The quantum 
and the type of grammatical information and the method of its representation in the dictionary. The first and the basic purpose of including grammatical information in the dictionary is to indicate the morphosyntactic peculiarities of the lexical unit. But all the grammatical details of a lexical unit cannot be given in a dictionary. The grammar of the language takes care of it. The lexicographer gives only the morphologically and syntactically important information. This information relates either to irregular or and unpredictable forms of the lexical unit or has some direct bearing on the direct bearing on the syntactical function of the lexical unit. For example, gender in Hindi is arbitrary and unpredictable. The form and meaning of the word do not provide any indication about the gender of the word. Again, gender in Hindi is grammatical. There is a concordance between the subject and the verb. So, it is essential for a dictionary of Hindi to give information about gender. Another purpose of giving grammatical information in the dictionary is to provide an additional indication of the meaning. Grammatical information is the first cue in the entry to understand the meaning and function of the word. For example, when we mark the Hindi word admi, man, as a noun and locate the word in the system and eliminate the possibilities of its being anything else. We also point out that it has certain structural possibilities. The grammatical information to be given in a dictionary is determined by the nature of the structure of the language. The simpler the grammar of the language, the lesser the grammatical information needed. Semantic information. The second part of dictionary entry gives the semantic description of the lexical unit. The different components of meaning which together constitute the semantic structure of a word have been described earlier. There are various methods of giving meanings to lexical units. These include the following types. Description or definition of the lexical unit in some more details. Equations. Lexical unit is equated with another lexical unit of similar meaning. Illustrative examples with elaborate textual details. Illustrative pictures with various uh, with visuals as well as animations. Glosses with detailed description, cross reference with other lexical items in the dictionary, etymology with details of the origin and coinage, labels with reference to the different domains and usages. All the different mechanisms employed by the lexicographer are not required for all types of lexical units. In some cases, only one mechanism may suffice, while for others, more than one may be required. For example, for a technical term, there may not be any necessity of giving an illustrative example. But for a policy mass word like RAN, there is a need of giving as many illustrations as the number of meaning or sub meanings. The borrowed words, the source of the etymological source of the etymology is considered necessary for understanding the meaning. For a lexical unit with restricted usage, some indication of the restriction of its use in specific domains is also useful. Some words may be defined by the base or family words or by cross reference in the dictionary. It is always useful to define a word in more than one way. As recommended by scholars, there should be no one, no, no, no one way to define a word. In defining, the end justifies the means, and the end should always be to convey as accurately and successfully as possible the essence of the word being defined. The meaning of a lexical unit is the sum total of its interpersonal impressions 
within a society. So, a lexicographer has to define the words in, in the socially accepted meanings. There is no scope for personal whims or fantasies in a dictionary. A lexicographer cannot define a word in the way he likes. He has to define the word as it exists and not as it should be. The writing of a dictionary is therefore not a task of setting up authoritative statements about the true meanings of words, but a task of recording to the best of one's abilities what various words have meant to the authors in the distant and immediate past. The writer of the dictionary is a historian, not a lawgiver. Various illustrative examples. Verbal illustrations showing a word in a characteristic revealing contexts are used for further clarifying and distinguishing slight sense of meaning. All dictionaries except a few special ones use this device. The special dictionaries which do not give examples are dictionaries of frequency count, orthographic dictionaries, pronunciation dictionaries, and reverse dictionaries, etc. They don't usually contain those electric examples. Since the purpose of this dictionary is to provide different types of information and not meaning, there is no need to give examples in them. The usefulness of examples is manifold. The first purpose of examples is to show concretely that a lexical unit exists in the language with a particular meaning. They help to illustrate the first and last known occurrences of the lexical unit. Its typical collocations, sense discriminations of words with multiple meanings, the differentiation of synonyms, etc. The illustrative examples help to know the grammatical categories and the stylistic peculiarities of a lexical item. We may quote from scholars to show that regarding the use of illustrations, it is said that the central place in the entry in most cases might be given to what are conveniently called illustrations. They are simply carefully selected and properly edited contexts for the entry word. What is traditionally called definitions might then be considered explanatory peculiarities, a comment on citations. Rubrics to indicate what brings together a group of them and what peculiarities are significant. Definitions can be central if only if the functions of a dictionary is actually to tell what a word means. If it is a matter to help the normal process of finding senses, the citations must be central for they are the input in the sense, sense discovering processes. Thus, various aspects or properties are handled in a general reference dictionary. Thank you.